This video is brought to you by jvjujitsuonline.com, the home to all JV Jiu Jitsu content, your source for strike based Jiu Jitsu. Check it out. Welcome to the Master Plan Lecture Series. My name is Javier Vasquez, and today we have a very important lecture Positional Basics, the Central Hub. So let's go ahead and get started. Ground fighting can be broken down into three positional categories chest to chest, chest to back, and supplemental. Each configuration has to be analyzed for its overall advantages and disadvantages. There needs to be a starting point. Some positions are more important and used than others. There has to be a starting point on the ground where attacks can start. Side mount is the starting point. Chest to back positions are linked and are a desired destination. Chest to chest positions have the most complexity. Supplemental or extremity positions are secondary to constant core tension. In my research, I have concluded that the side mount is the most reliably stable position on the ground. Constant core tension can be activated from side mount. Side mount is the central hub. You can transition to any other core ground position when you start from side mount. The most common route to side mount is through the guard, chest to chest. We have three positions, the side mount, the guard, and the mount. From side mount, you can reach the guard, you can reach the mount. You have chest to back positions, you have the turtle, and you have back mount. From side mount, you can get to the turtle. And if necessary, you can go from the turtle to back mount. Or from side mount, you can go directly to back mount through controlling the twisting transition that I call the meat grinder. Supplemental positions, you can get to leg locks from side mount. And you can also get to arm locks from side mount. So let's discuss types of turtle from chest to back. You have the standard turtle where you have hands and knees or elbows and knees on the ground. You have turtle sitting. They are sitting up with no hands, one or two hands on the ground. You have turtle standing. You have one knee on the ground with or without one hand on the ground. Let's discuss types of back mount. You have your standard back mount over under with one or more hooks inserted. You have your absolute advantage back mount, one or both arms are trapped. You also have an OFP back mount or optimized finishing position back mount with one or more hands trapped behind the opponent's back. So let's discuss types of guard from chest to chest. You have an open guard, legs are uncrossed, and the opponent is either standing or kneeling. You have a closed guard. The legs are wrapped around the top of the opponent's waist. You have half guard. The legs are controlling one of the opponent's legs above the knee. You have a quarter guard or quarter mount, depending on your perspective. Legs are crossed, controlling the opponent's leg below the knee. The butterfly guard. Both feet are tucked inside the opponent's thighs. The X guard, a variation of the open guard where one arm is underhooking the opponent's leg while the legs are controlling the knee and upper thigh. The rubber guard, one or both of the legs are high on the opponent's shoulders and the hands are used to control one's own foot to prevent posturing. Let's discuss types of side mount. Configuration four, head and arm control from the top. Configuration three, bottom opponent secures and controls the underhook side. Configuration two, the far side underhook is the tether and the hugging arm is the attacking arm. Configuration one, head and arm control from the bottom. Hook pass side mount, no tethers while using inside knee control and the unattainable angle. The northern attack comes from configuration two, it's a far side lazy boy facing the opponent's head, trying to trap their near side arm. The southern attack, sitting on one hip, 
with your back to the opponent while facing their legs. Okay, take a thummy side mount or side mount headlock. Side mount headlock on the ground with the opponent's back flat or on their side. Knee on belly. The southern knee is placed on the belly to block the legs from attaining the guard or making space to strike. The north-south, your legs are over the shoulder rather than directly over the head with the intention of choking the neck. The unattainable angle, legs are over the shoulder rather than directly over the head with the intention of neutralizing the legs. Let's discuss types of mount. The top person has postured their chest and head up while still sitting on their knees. The low mount, the top person has their chest down and their hooks inserted. The quarter mount, the top person has their posture up with one knee down and one knee up and the bottom opponent is on their side. Let's discuss leg lock configurations. Semi-ashi or ashigurami, one foot is in and one foot is on the hip. The opponent's leg is either on the same side or across the hip. 411, both of attacker's legs are inside with the opponent's leg being straight. Game over, both attacker's legs are inside with the opponent's leg bent at the knee. The X position, both the attacker's legs are on the outside and the opponent's leg is on the same side. 50-50 position, both attacker's legs are on the outside and the opponent's leg is on the cross side. Let's discuss types of AFC or arm lock final control. Standard control, the southern arm is controlling the opponent's arm. Optimized control, the southern arm is controlling the opponent's leg while the northern arm is controlling the opponent's arm. That was my presentation on positional basics, the central hub. I wanted to give a foundational explanation that we can build from and simplify the strategy that I'm trying to teach you guys. Thank you guys for listening, and we'll catch you real soon.